Live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2016, brought to you by Hortonworks. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host George Gilbert, Silicon Angle, Wikibon analyst and big data. Our next guest is D Dinesh Nirmal, Vice President of Next Generation Platforms, Big Data Analyst, and Nancy Hendley, Director of Offerings Management at IBM Analytics. Welcome to The Cube, good to Thank see you, you again. Welcome, good to see you. Dinesh. Thank you for coming on. All right, so analytics, next gen, we're going to have a rapid fire question. Sure. So yeah. what's next gen and how does that fit into the current analytics at IBM? Right. <laughs> so the next generation platform is the platform that we're building in IBM, uh, which targets four personas mainly, the data scientist persona, the data engineer, um, the CDO, the chief data officer, or a business or citizen analyst. Those are the four personas. So it, you know, it encompasses and completes the whole end-to-end -end picture, whether you're all the way from ingest to visualization. So you can bring in the data, right? As a data engineer, you can wrangle the data, you can transform, cleanse the data. As a data scientist, you can build the model, take that data, right? As a business analyst, you can see the data on Watson Analytics. As a CDO, you can set the governance on all top of it. So that is a huge... And, and so the four ones, data science, data engineer, business analyst, and citizen? No, CDO, the chief, chief, chief data, data officer, officer okay, right? Got it. He or she sets the overall governance on top of the data, which drives the roles of data scientists or data engineer, what they can do with the data. And Nancy, on the analytics side today, mm -hmm. we're seeing data engineer augment and add value to the data scientist. It seems yeah. more of a platform-like engineering role or architectural role, and the data science is becoming a primary front line. So it should be, is right? That... <laughs> I, well, I think what you're seeing is the shift from products and tools to more of a platform way to approach the, the challenges that we have, which is, it's not just about the technology, it's not just about the tools, it's about having the ability to take analytics and embed them into your business, right? The, the goal that we've always had. And so if you think about how we used to think about architecture and how we would make data available, it's we gather up the data we, that we knew that were to answer the questions that a department would have. What does finance want? What does marketing want? We yeah. make it available through the various tools. It didn't enable a couple things, right? It didn't really enable any sort of discovery of the what if scenarios that was done in a corner, not collaborating with anybody else. And it, it also didn't enable a level of personalization that a specific role might need. And so now when we're looking at next generation, what we're looking, we flipped this over and we said, let's look at how people are sharing and looking for data and collaborating on data more at the role. So the level of personalization has gotten much different. And when you think of that way, the architect very different. And that's so you're flipping it upside down. Mm -hmm. So we just interviewed from Arizona State some great scientists who are doing cancer research with data and they would support that thesis by yeah. saying and what worked for them was one, access to more open data, mm -hmm. yes. the ability to start cataloging an observation space, which is a term that Jeff Jonas uses a lot yep. at IBM. Jeff, if you're watching, um, we're, we're <laughs> borrowing and stealing your word, I love it. Having an observation space, then from there, the discovery right. is not about the known questions, but the unknown questions, right. as you said. Okay. I totally buy that. How the hell do you do it? What happens if I'm a customer? Do I throw everything away? Is there an augmentation? Is there a sequencing? Is it rip and replace? Mm -hmm. How do I implement that in that, that nirvana, that dream? Right, so I just want to touch uh, one point that Nancy mentioned on collaboration. That's going to be a key point in the next generation platform. How does the different personas collaborate and work together? Because underlying data, they all have access Not be to. siloed, you mean? Exactly, right? right? Both so, in terms of access to data and also with each other. Right, I sharing. mean, exactly. So okay. you can create a project within next generation platform and you could be a data scientist and you can share that data with the data engineer or other data scientists, right? So that collaboration piece is very critical. But to come back to your question, right, how do we do it? I mean, so today the data exists. I mean, data is existing in a lot of data sources. How do we bring that into the data wrangling as a data engineer, right? So we have, we are putting 100 plus 
as connectors into the NGP, the next generation platform, where the data could be in HDFS, data could be on traditional data sources, data could be in S3, could be in Swift, could be in RIAC, anywhere, right? So you can bring the data in, and then we are on top of that, we are bringing data works on cloud, which will help you do the data wrangling. Then we have the predictive, the prescriptive, the advanced analytics piece, where you can build the models. We have the machine learning piece there, the deep learning. And then how do you visualize the data for the business analyst to look at it? So it all comes together, it's all stitched together yeah. in a very, you know. Like an operating system. Exactly, <laughs> and, and under the cover, Spark becomes the engine to execute. Absolutely. So it's a great story for us. And when you think about the, the gaps that we're addressing with this, it's like we said, it's collaboration, it's also self-service, it's really opening up access. So mm -hmm. The data is there, but the ability to go in and explore the different silos based yeah. on the questions you have or the way that you want to use the data, it, that is the big that gap that exists. Taking that, making that more consumable, that is a key focus for next generation. So this, this sounds very like a very expansive vision. Um, what can you do by embracing all those roles that others cannot? And take, for example, perhaps, you know, lineage. I mean, mm -hmm. some people say, oh, you know, we can track exactly what you do in terms of uh, transforming the data, but you're taking it, you know, like from birth to death. Maybe that's a, <laughs> not the greatest example. Did, tell us, tell us how there's a data plane and perhaps a control plane that you might uniquely be able to provide? Well, ideally, you want to be able to open up access without the user or the consumer of that data having to worry about lineage, right? It has to be tracked, it has to be there, but you want to mask that from the user, right? They don't need to know where the data is, they just want to know that it's good, it's trusted, and that they can trust the source, right? And now we, we're talking about open source capa open source data, you're talking about external data, data that you have inside of your enterprise. What we really are doing is putting a fabric, I guess is the best mm -hmm. way to describe mm -hmm. it, that's in between the systems that you've built up, external data that you want to bring in, and then all of the applications and the usage that wants to get access to that data. Would and it, making that very consumable by the role, right? So would it be fair to say that that fabric is the is the core of the value add that no matter where you're bringing data from or adding analysis to and whatever role you are for collaboration you're maintaining the integrity of right. that right. fabric which is sounds like it's metadata right. more than the data itself metadata metadata is cool right <laughs> so that's a metadata. really good point right so if you look at a lot of the vendors i mean you can do the etl piece but what we bring as an enterprise vendor is a core governance. When you talk about the blanket, right? As a CDO, how do I make sure the data is trusted? The people who are looking at, so how do we make sure end to end that is covered? And that's where the governance comes in. So we are, for example, contributing heavily into Apache Atlas, which is the open metadata service, right? So we are doing that. So that is a key piece for us to make sure that end to end, that security layer is there, the governance layer is there. And you guys are investing heavily in the open source piece Absolutely. of this. Oh yeah. And the other, can you just take a minute to explain that? I want people to understand the level of commitment to open source that you guys have. Right, so if you look at the community, right, I mean Spark, we have a Spark Technology Center in San Francisco where the whole sole focus is to contribute to the open source community. Uh, we have the Apache Atlas project, which is an open metadata service that we are heavily contributing. You look at System ML, we have pretty much contributed the whole thing to the open source. So so IBM is becoming, you know, our... So Linux moment. Right. IBM was heavily involved. Spark SQL. Spark, Spark SQL. SQL, Spark R. R. Right, R, we became yeah. a consortium member. You know, yeah. we are a platinum member in the R board. So all those things, we see the growth in open source, the community, we want to be part of. Well, it. certainly the practitioners that we talked to, certainly we had the guys just on before you on Arizona State, open source has changed the game, and we believe that, certainly in the enterprise side, and you guys do too, that that's happening. Absolutely. Um, with that, Nancy, I want to ask you a question, as we were talking briefly last night during the uh, during the open session here about how the world's changing, right? Mm -hmm. Across the board, from the media world we live in to your world and to customers, this shift is really accelerated. So it's not oh, yeah. so much people are pivoting. I mean, you're pivoting in the sense of not because your business is hurting, but you know, startups are pivoting because this value is shifting and this people are getting a clear line of sight on some things. Mm -hmm. 
What is the big thing that you would share that you see that's, that's been different over the past year or so, where the value is becoming clearer, uh, where everyone's vectoring into. What's the what's the what's the that that main value Gosh. piece? It's, it's hard to say one thing. I think there people there see a few the, things the, or I think three people things. see the value of open source innovation, right? And then the integration of open source capability with existing capabilities. So like what we've done with Big Insights is taking some of that open source capability and integrate it into the product. Um, I think there's huge advantages in that, right? Because now you're not limited by the skills within your own organization. You can move at the speed of the community. I think there's been a big shift in thinking about how important it is for yeah. self-service access of data, right? Yeah. And that is a big change from where we've come from in data warehousing, where it was so governed and so groomed and- It wasn't real time, yeah, you didn't know your time. queries. We yeah. really didn't have that ability to discover and explore. And that's really what's going to be the businesses that can disrupt and change their business yeah. models need that, that's table stakes for them. Tinesh, I want to ask you a question, because Jeff Frickle, the general manager of the Cube, always says when we talk about our business, that the answer to our problems is in, in a Cube interview somewhere. <laughs> oh, we interview such smart people. But that really kind of highlights what we're seeing as a number one thing that everyone's talking about is the, val the answer is in the data. Right. Whether it's curing cancer or whatever business, you can't throw it away, you want to collect it. Right. If you believe that the answer's in the data, you got to have data, mm -hmm. and then you got to have the tools for it. How do Access. the users get the value out of the data? What are some techniques that you guys are seeing, Nancy, we we'll open this up to you as well, is like, what are the things that are people doing now to maximize acceleration of value out of the data, finding their answers? Right, so. Is it the tooling? Is it like just them just doing the work? No, I mean, for example, I mean, uh, one example I'll give you is machine learning or deep learning, right? The data is there, you build the model, you want to predict and look at the score and see how well you know, your model is doing. And so for example, if you look at the real estate market, how do you build a model to see how well the prices will be reflected over a long period of time? That's a great example. The data is there, you pull that into it, you build a model, you give a feedback loop so that real time that model is being trained and updating the model itself. So those kind of things, right, I mean, in any segments of market, we can use it. So whether it's the airline industry, whether it's the healthcare industry, whether it's the real estate market. So vertical stock. integration to the applications, yeah. or having analytics also in the application, but also working at this new fabric. Was right, that it's about getting inside in the data to make intelligent decisions, right? So that's what it comes down to. How do we take the data, get inside into it, and you can make intelligent decisions on it. So. And then speeding that into a process where you can actually take action on it. Because exactly. that's what we've got to make very consumable, because the faster you can do that, the faster you can iterate through those questions and get to ex discoveries and things you didn't know about, the better position your business is. So is the bottleneck technology or is the bottleneck the processes themselves and the, the oh, people or both? The, I think it's the, it's the ability to provide that collaboration with the power yeah. of the technology that we've got today. Right, and, and I think that's I one of the biggest that. problems that next generation platform will solve. Because in silos, there is a lot of these products exist, right? You can ETL using a vendor, you can do the predictive or prescriptive, but how do, how do we make sure this all comes together, stitched together, right? So as an end user or as a data scientist, data engineer, any of those personas, how do I make sure that it all comes in yeah. one package? I mean, you want to create users that become heroes in their organizations, the Superman, if you will, but silos are the kryptonite exactly. for that. I mean, they kill the yeah. Innovation. Exactly. Um, Absolutely. Silos so that, are not good. Right, and that's right. the differentiator for us is that we are bringing the data, so you can have a data lake, whether it's HDFS, you can have Spark, but we bring it all together, that doesn't exist today, and we are bringing that to the market, and we already Great. have data science experience. Well, we got to wrap up, but I want to get one final question in. What are we going to see from you guys coming up? I know you have a show, IBM Insight, which has now been called World of Watson. Mm -hmm. Watson, obviously, yeah, is great marketing. Everyone always, that's great marketing, that's a great product, too. So we're going to hear more about the Watson and how that's kind of become a brand for pretty much a lot of the analytics. World of Watson, obviously the show. Right. It's a big event for you guys coming up in the fall. Um, what's going to be leading up to that? What are some of the things we're going to hear? You're going to hear a lot more coming on the next generation platform. So we saw the data science experience recently announced. We continue to focus on improving all the capabilities underneath it, like Hadoop and Spark and a lot of the open source capabilities, but also more focus on more collaborative roles that will be coming out where we're changing the experience of using analytics. Yeah, great. And then the changing of the work environment, certainly the future of work, as the people call it, yeah. applies to this yeah. area. I Absolutely. mean, you yeah. see change 
I mean, happening. So just one comment to add to what Nancy said, which is we have a lot of exciting stuff coming. We already announced data science experience. We have data engineer experience coming. We have that data lake piece coming along with the CDO, the chief data officer. Um, plus, we are doing a lot of interesting work on machine learning and deep learning. So there's a lot of good stuff coming. Yeah. And it's wow. a lake you won't drown in. <laughs> yeah, you can swim in it, yeah. I'll have to wear my floaties. Um, <laughs> So guys, thanks so much for sharing the data and the insight here on theCUBE. Uh, we'd love to bring, bring that uh, forward. Look forward to the event. We're going to be at the World of Watson. The Cube will be there uh, from what uh, we're hearing from. So we're going to be there at Insight Now. There. World of Watson. IBM here inside the Cube, sharing the analytics story, flipping upside down on its head. The world is changing. Open data, collaboration, smarter data, getting the value out of the data. This is the Cube, sharing the data here. At Hadoop Summit 2016, we'll be right back with more after the short break. 